Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Greetings, 3C family. We're going to get into the Word of God. If you're not already seated, please just take your seats, get out your Bibles, your notebooks, and your pens, and we're going to receive from the Lord today. Uh, thank you for such powerful ministry, such powerful worship, 3C Live, um, such powerful ministry. We really love and we appreciate you. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I know that you've already been touched by the power of God, but it's now time to get into the Word. Are you ready for the Word? Yes. yes. Right. Well, let's jump right in. Uh, uh, Powerful word by uh, Pastor Shanae last week. Wow, the danger of impatience. Were you challenged? I know I was challenged. And uh, you know, there's been repentance, there's been change, and we trust in the Lord in everything that we are and everything that we do. We need to deal with this COVID of the mind. Amen. Amen. Now, we're continuing with our series on family matters. Family matters. And we saw how important it was to restore the family, raise the family, disciple the family. And today, we're going to be speaking on sanctify the family, sanctify the family. And the last time we spoke about the family, we spoke about the importance of discipling the family. The root word for disciple and discipline is the same. So when we're talking about disciple, there's no such thing as discipling without discipline. And we looked at the importance of discipline in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, where it spoke about not despising chastening and not being discouraged when you are rebuked, not despising correction. And that we need to understand that we all need that within our lives to become that which God wants us to be. Otherwise, the Bible says you're an illegitimate child. Uh, Being a child means you come to that place where you, I won't say enjoy it, but you appreciate, you you endure chastening, the Bible says. You, You appreciate and you're thankful that people love you enough to be able to speak into your life. But of course, that cannot take place without relationship. It's relationship, you know, that uh, 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 brings the ability to form those boundaries. But rules without relationship will bring a rebellion and relationship without rules just brings chaos. So, so we have relationship that comes about with certain boundaries that gives us direction in the relationship, but also those boundaries are set in relationship, which means the foundation of it is always love. And where do we get love from? The Bible, the Word of God, which means we need to be God-fearing. We're raising up our children to be God-fearing, not parent-fearing, because when you install a fear as a parent, you create a spirit of deception and a, a spirit of deceit where your kids will deceive you and, 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 and uh, create that deception rather than creating a God-fearing a spirit which brings about a respect and inspires a respect for authority. So once again, it's bringing God into the home. Now, I want to continue along those lines. And as I said, the hashtag for today is sanctify the family. Say me, sanctify the family. Sanctify. Come on, say it again. Sanctify the family. Sanctify. sanctify means to set apart. Set apart for God's purpose. And that's what we need to do within our family. Now note, as we are uh, 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 looking at family matters, when you talk about family matters, we're not just talking about our relationship with our children. What affects you within your family as a person affects every relationship that you have. So it might be your colleagues at work, your employees, your employer. Uh, It might be as a disciple. It might be maybe you're a teacher of a class or wherever you are. These principles that we are being taught today, you can apply in every area of your life. You might have a different hat, but you're the same person at the same heart. And that's what we're dealing with today. We're dealing with the character of who we are, not just the skill of working the relationship. Are you with me today? So therefore we need to sanctify the family, but that affects your, as a leader, as a cell leader, as a pastor, as a shepherd, as a teacher, um, what, wherever you are, you can apply this message within your life. So sanctify God's purpose within your relationship with your child. 
your relationship with your parent, your relationship at work, your relationship in everything. So when we talk about sanctify the family, we're saying sanctify the family, sanctify the neighborhood, sanctify the city, sanctify our nation. Yes. Are you guys hearing me here today? Yes. Okay, so this can all be, the word of God gets applied, even though I'm speaking about children, this word gets applied uh, universally. So the first thing I want us to look at today, we need to understand, is that every person is different. So it means different. different. Right? Every person is different. Every individual, every person is an individual. Every child is different. And every person is born with a different temperament, with a different personality. But although the temperament may differ, in other words, the responses to feelings, the way you feel, your emotions, uh, uh, your thoughts, you know, um, it develops certain attitudes and behaviors. These attitudes and behaviors cannot be excused by personality or temperament. It's either right or wrong, and if wrong, needs to be dealt with. Are you hearing me here today? Yes. So you can have a strong-willed child. You can have a more compliant child. You can have one that, um, you know, enjoys, you know, just sitting and watching people around them, watching movement, but doesn't do anything. While you might have another child that aggressively, you know, uh, impulsively goes and touches things and gets involved. But even though different, when you have people that are irritated or frustrated because they're triggered by certain experiences within their lives, uh, now specifically we're talking to children, you know, what happens is there's attitudes that are developed, behaviors and attitudes develop as a result of temperament, personality, but if wrong, need to be corrected. And that's why we're talking once again about discipline. How do we bring that about within the child? Now, now, as, as you discipline a child, as you, as you correct a child, um, you learn and discover what works. Remember, they are different. People are different. Children are different. What works with the one doesn't work with the other. What's effective, you know, in the communicating uh, with the one uh, doesn't work with the other. So with one child, you might say no. With another child saying no, it works. No, doesn't work. One, you might explain why uh, it works with the one, doesn't work with the other. Some, you just remove the objects and then the kid goes and finds the objects. Others, you do grounding. Grounding works with the one. Grounding doesn't work with the other. So you've got all types of people, all types of children. So every child, every person is different and responds differently. In other words, we are more like snowflakes. We are not clones. So you cannot treat all your children the same. You cannot treat everybody at work the same. And you can't expect everybody to think like you and to be like you. Are you hearing me? So we need to check when dealing with our people, when dealing with your children, you've got to be able to notice. Let me notice. notice. You've got to be able to notice a negative attitude. You've got to be able to discern. Let me discern. discern. You've got to be able to know. Let me know. know. So you need to discern. You need to know a negative attitude when it comes out or behavior. You need to detect it rather early rather than excuse it as a personality trait. Well, that's just the way they are. You know, just like Papa. Well, Papa wasn't right. You understand? Just because it's like Papa doesn't make it right. Just because it was like Opa doesn't make it right. Just because it was like that person, well, look, you know, hey, doesn't make it right. Can't be excused because of temperament or personality. Uh, 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 if you just leave it, what will happen? there will be an assumption that that attitude or behavior is all right. But at the end of the day, it leads to destruction. And if you don't deal with it early, if you don't deal with it early within your children's life, now what happens? You produce adult children. Are you hearing me? 
You know, they're 40 and they still act like children. They're 50 and they still act like children. So what do we need to do? We need to be able to discern. We need to know what is right and what is wrong. We need to discern between the truth or the lie. Are you hearing me here today? Because there is power in the lie. Hear me today. There is power in the lie to destroy your children to the degree that they will not recover. To destroy people's life to the place where they will never emerge victorious within their lives. The power of the lie. You know, when I think about the power of the lie, I think about, um, you know, <laughs> you know, the magicians. You know, the other day we had, we had Apostle Lawrence Kong with us and he's got one of the largest churches in Asia, in Singapore. And as a hobby, he, he's a magician. So what he does, he uses this as an evangelistic tool. He goes to China and in China where they're not allowed to preach the gospel, what he does, he goes and he does magic tricks and then through his magic tricks, he brings the story of the love of Jesus Christ. He brings it that way. And so many, so, so lives are touched and changed and transformed. And I remember quite a few years ago when we had him here uh, with the 3C family, he did a few tricks. And, um, you know, it's amazing the ability that he has to fool our senses to such a degree that he can take something, make it disappear and all of us go, wow, wow, that is incredible. He'll have something. I don't know what he does, if it's he's distracting our senses or whatever he does. But as a magician, he's able to take something that is a lie and present it as truth. When we look at it, it shouts out truth. But we know it's a lie. <laughs> you know, now... I mean, our church was packed out. We had thousands of people. And I remember, you know, all of our people, you know, everybody was calm, you know, until um, he did a very, uh, he did a trick. Um, you know, most people understood it wasn't supernatural. You know, they, they, they understood it was illusions until he levitated a table. Oh, man, let me tell you, let me tell you, I don't know if you guys can remember when you were there. Let me, the guys were nervous because what he did, he took his hands and then he lifted it and suddenly the, the table started lifting off the floor and it was shaking like this. And, 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 and I, I wish I had videos to show you guys. And the table, and if you looked, there was nothing un, under the table and he lifted and the table was there and the table lifted off the floor and the people thought, the devil is in the church. <laughs> they thought he was a, you know, they thought he was demon possessed. He was demon. I mean, people were crazy. They thought, they thought it was supernatural, but it was a trick. And, uh, you know, of course, a magician doesn't tell his tricks. He told me the trick afterwards, you know, but the ability to levitate that table, I mean, people went in a frenzy because they were, they were supernatural. What he did, he presented as truth a lie. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now, if Apostle Lawrence Kong can do it, David Copperfield can do it, and that he can trick us, how much more do you think the devil doesn't trick us to believe that within our lives, there are things we believe as true, as true, as true, but it's the big lie. Yes. It's the big lie. And that's why the devil is called the father of all lies. He is the inventor. He's the father. He's the producer of lies. Everything that he does is to create that lie. See, the lie needs to be identified. And you know, I see so many people in a week. I see hordes of people in a week, one-on-ones and might be smaller meetings, uh, might be bigger meetings. And as I converse with people and I listen to how they speak, I've been moved how people are controlled by a lie. Controlled. And here's the thing. If the lie forms the foundation of your life, it is from that place that you make decisions. 
from that place. And I want to say, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a sewer. It's a gutter. It's a, it's a drain. And now what happens from that, that sewer, you start making decisions concerning other people. In other words, in actual fact, from that sewer, you start, you start interpreting the lives of other people as well. So according to where you're at, you start judging others, thinking everybody believes what you believe because maybe one or two of people agree with you. Now you say, well, everybody, well, everybody. No, it's just you and your big fat lie. Are you hearing me yet? Today? Yes. So, and, and, and therefore, I, I want to help you because this is huge when it comes to, to, to raising children. My biggest job in raising children, raising disciples, is dispelling lies. So it's not about do what I tell you to do. It's not. It's when I start asking questions and they start speaking to me and my children speak to me or my disciples speak to me or pastors speak to me. When I start listening what they believe, it blows my mind because it's contrary to the Word of God. And what is my job as a parent? My job is to dispel the lie. Are you hearing me? My, my goal is to preach the truth. And as I sit and I listen to disciples and I listen to my 12, and I listen to my 144 and I listen to, to, to other pastors. And I, let me tell you, it's not, it doesn't matter how spiritual you are. I listen to preachers that have preached 30 years, you know, and then I listen. And it, it's amazing that it's got nothing to do with how long you've been serving the Lord. It's got to do with a decision at some stage where you have allowed a lie to overshadow the truth. It's got nothing to do with how long you've been serving the Lord or how fruitful you are or how big your church is or how much you've done for the Lord. All you need is one time to believe the lie, just once. And now what happens? Now you go into that gutter of thinking. And you know what? I've come to that place where also I won't allow people to bring me into their sewer. I'm not going to allow you to, to, yeah, you can think what you think about me. It doesn't really matter but I'm not going to allow what you think to deter what God has placed upon my life and the calling upon my life to sow my life and lay down my life and be a blessing to others. Are you hearing me yeah? Yes. You can be in your gutter. I'm not going to get into your gutter. I'm not going to get into your sewer. I'm not going to get into your discouragement. I'm not going to get into your fear. I'm not going to get into your intimidation. You want to live in the gutter? You want to live in the sewer? That's your decision. What do I believe? I believe the Word of God. Amen. Are you hearing me here today? Amen. So let me help you with the Bible. So as parents, we're there to dispel the lie. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Are you hearing me here today? Yes. So what am I saying? First of all, verse 3 says, the weapons. The what? The weapons. The weapons. The weapons of what? The weapons of our warfare. So as parents, you're in a war. Are you with me? Yes. You are fighting for your children. We are fighting for the children of our neighborhood. We are fighting for the children of our nation. We are in a war, the weapons of our warfare. We are in a fight. Don't lose your fight. You're fighting for your children as parents. That's what we do. We fight for our neighborhood. You fight for people. And then the weapons. What are the weapons? In other words, the tools. The tools you use. The weapons of your warfare. In other words, the tools you use to conquer. And what he's saying, the tools that you are using, they're not carnal, fleshly. The word carnal, the Greek word, sarkikos, it means the following. It means fleshly. It means sensual. Um, in other words, according to how you feel, 
according to what you sense physically, emotionally. So when we're talking about sensual, it's that, he says, that's not the weapons. It's not what you feel. Well, I feel, it's not what you feel. Well, I sense, it's not what you sense. It's not what you feel. It's not your emotion. The weapons, the tools are not sensual. They're not emotional. So we've got to understand the weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not fleshly. So anything in the physical, it's not money. The weapon is not a money. The weapon is not education. Are you hearing me here today? Okay. Uh, the weapon is not the courts taking somebody. That's not your weapon. The weapons are not physical. But what does the Bible say? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to do what? First of all, mighty in God. Mighty in whom? In God. In God. Mighty in whom? In God. in God. So it's godly weapons that God gives us, which is the word of God, by the way, so it's God's word, which is the word of God to do what? Number one, to pull down strongholds. Say with me strongholds. strongholds. So what's strongholds? Strongholds is the lie manifest. I'll say it again. Strongholds is the lie manifest. In other words, it's the lie that has produced. Um, it's the... It's the lie that has lived. It's the fruit of the lie. So it's not the lie itself. It's what the lie already has produced. So if you look at your children, has the, is there a lie that has produced what? By what they believe, what they think. So I can't do this. I don't have the ability. Um, I'm so overwhelmed. Uh, I'm discouraged. Well, nothing, because that's what we, the, the, the words we use. Always, no ways, forever. You, you understand? I can never. Uh, that's the type of language we use. So what, when we talk that doomsday language, I will never, I cannot, uh, that type of language. So what happens, there's a lie that gets placed within uh, a person's heart and a stronghold then becomes a product within your thinking and a product within your mind, which then immobilizes you to be that which God has called you to be. Why? Because you believe it. Oh, pastor, I'm so overwhelmed. I can't do this. I can't disciple. I can't love. I can't. Where does this come from? Where does this come from? Because the Bible says otherwise. I don't have the capacity to love my husband, love my wife, love my children. What do you mean loving a person? We're called to love our neighbors. We're called to love everybody. What do you mean? You can't love your husband. You can't love your children. Hang on. You should have been past that by now. We're talking about loving your neighbors. We're talking about loving your, your neighborhood. We're talking about loving you know, having love, that's like a South African taxi. There's always praise for one more, one more person, one more family, one more neighborhood, one more city, one more nation. Come on. Amen. Amen. But you see, you believe the lie. Oh, I'm overwhelmed. I, I, I can't. I don't have it in me. And what happens? Now, as a parent, you put this lie into your kids. Put this lie into your disciples. You see, as a, as a parent, I'm quick to pick up on these lies. And when it's within my children, I observe them. I listen to them. I listen to what they say. I listen to how they speak. Yes, they're different. They've got different temperaments. But you see, the lie is a lie. The truth is the truth. doesn't matter what the temperament is. doesn't matter where you find yourself. And that's why as a, as a pastor, as a disciple maker, as a father of nations, and as, as a spiritual father, as a father of my children, my ears are always open to detect and to hear and to understand where the, where the lie is and where the truth is. And that's why the Bible says that we have, we have weapons to pull down the strongholds. And then verse 5 says, and casting down the arguments, um, the Greek word here is, must actually be interpreted imaginations. In actual fact, the King James Version says, casting down imaginations or reasonings. In other words, casting down that lie. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you need to cast down that lie. Some of us, we've got COVID of the mind. 
and there's no vaccination for that. <laughs> you need the Bible. You need the Word. The only vaccination for that is the Bible. Sure. You need to cast it down, cast down that argument, cast down and every high thing, this fear, this, this timidity, this I can't, this and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? It is the Bible, you see, and then bringing every thought captive. Say with me, captive. captive. Bringing every thought captive. Captive to what? To the obedience of Jesus Christ. And that's how you punish all disobedience. Verse six, when your obedience is fulfilled, but you won't obey the lie. You're only going to obey the truth. Are you hearing Amen. me? Amen. And the Bible says, John 8, 31, he says, Jesus said to the Jews who believed, verse 31, he said to the Jews who believed, they believed, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. If you live in the word, not live in the lie, not live in the gutter, not live in the sewer. But if you live in my word, what are you living in? Are you living in the newspaper? Are you living in social media with the mob and you like everybody else and you bring that into your home? You put that on your children? You put that on everybody around you? Or are you abiding in the word? He says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples. And then he says, and you shall know the truth and what? And the truth will set, set you, you free. free. What will the truth do? Set it you will free. make you free. Set you free. Set you free. So we've got to get out of this lie. You want to get into obedience? You've got to get. You believe the lie. You're so discouraged. We're on medication and we're on pills and, 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 and we can't think straight and we, we can't function and, 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 and we, we, we caught up. Yes, I know the issues are there. And then we, the economy and, 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 the, and the stuff is there. We understand it, but within that, are you standing for truth or are you standing for the lie? Now, now let me help you. You see, as a, as, a, as a parent, as a pastor, as a shepherd, as a cell leader, as a teacher, as a CEO, as a managing director, as a manager, as a godly citizen of the nation, as a Christian, what do you do? when it comes to your children. My question is, are you alert and sober or are you sleeping? Because you're called to raise your children, right? So you can't be sleeping. We're called to raise the village, right? Raise a nation, can't be sleeping. So what does 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 6 say? He says, for, he says therefore, this is powerful. Listen to this. He says, therefore, let us not sleep. Grab your neighbor, wake them up. Say, stop sleeping, neighbor. Stop, stop, sleeping. Sleeping. Oh, stop yeah. sleeping. Let us not sleep as others do. But let us watch and be sober. I'll say it again. Let us not sleep. Let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be be sober. Say with me, watch and be sober. Watch and be Come on, sober. say it again. Say, watch and be sober. Watch and be sober. Now, let me show you the alternative, verse 7. It says, for those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who sleep, sleep at night. What's night? Night is the dark times. Night is the tough times. Night is the evil times. Night is the COVID times. Night is the struggle with our health, with the COVID. Night is the struggle we have with the, with the uh, uh, night is the struggle we have with the economy due to COVID. Night is the struggle we have because of corruption we're experiencing within our nation. Night is the evil we're experiencing with our young girls being raped. And just like we did the funeral this week of that 16-year-old boy that was stabbed in Alexandra by another 16-year-old. And we were involved and one of our pastors did the memorial service there. And where we realized there's a greater problem. It's not just an incident. It's a whole 
thing of drugs and there's some mismanagement going on and things. Once again, and I'm not showing fingers to any government. At the end of the day, the church is responsible. You and I are responsible. Can I get a big amen, amen. there? And I'm not here pointing fingers. I'm saying we're responsible. So when we talk about night, we're talking about the dark times. And in our nation, we're going through dark times. But listen here, those who sleep, sleep during the dark times. You see, they sleep when things are not going uh, well. See, those who get drunk, they drunk at night. They drunk. In other words, you, you're not sober-minded. You become part of the mob. You're part of the jumping onto Twitter. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Oh, hey, everybody, fear-mongering. That's the, part of that. You see, you're drunk. You're drunk. You're drunk. You're not, you're not, you're not sober-minded. You're not clear-headed. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. What is night? Night is the dark times. The difficult times, the evil times, the times where people are fighting the pine, where people are destroying one another, murdering one another, hurting one another, where we're struggling. The, see, the drunk are drunk at night. And the Bible says, no, we need to be sober-minded. See, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 6, I like, the, I like what the New Living Translation says. He says, so be on your guard, not asleep like others. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop sleeping. Stop, stop sleeping. sleeping. We're in the church and you're sleeping. You're a Christian and you're sleeping. You're a cell leader and you're sleeping. You're not on God. You're not on God. You're sleeping. And now when you're going through all of these things, you think it's an excuse now, not just to sleep, but to get drunk. It's an excuse not to do anything. The Bible says, no, stay alert. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But then let's look at verse 8. Verse 8 is powerful. It says, but let us who are of the day. Of the day. day. What must we be? Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. Be clear-headed. Let us who live in the light be clear-headed, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Covers your heart, the breastplate, right? Covers your heart, covers your organs. Protects you. The breastplate of what? Of faith. Of what? Of faith. Of what? Of faith. Of, faith. of what? Of faith. of faith. Raw faith in the Word of God. Faith is a decision. Faith is a choice. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. Breastplate of faith. In other words, Lord, I trust you. I believe your word. I dispel the lie. I will not believe the lie. The lie that the devil is bringing before me that there's absolutely out of control and that you are not in control is an absolute lie. Breastplate of faith. And the Bible says, and love. And love. And what is love? Love is laying down your life. Love is living for others. What does breastplate do? It protects your heart, but it's a breastplate of faith and love. And then it's the helmet of the hope of what? The hope of salvation. What is hope? An expectation for the future. A what? An expectation for the future. A what? An expectation. An excited expectation for the future. So the NLT says, therefore, if we live in the light, be clear-headed, protected by love and faith, confidence within our salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then he says in verse 9, he says, for God did not appoint us to wrath. <laughs> Come on, somebody. He did not appoint us to punish us. He did not appoint you know, what we are going through is not to get you. What you are going through is not to hurt you. What you are going through is not to destroy you. Because God did not appoint us to His anger, but to obtain salvation through Christ Jesus. And that's why he, that we should live together with Him. I like verse 9. He says, for God chose to save us, not to pour out His anger on us. So what lie are you believing? God loves you. God cares for you. God's got a great uh, 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 plan for you. God's got great things He wants to do in and through you. Verse 11 says, Therefore, comfort each other. Edify one another. And New Living Translation says, Encourage each other. Build one another up. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Is this helping you? Yes. So as a parent, as a parent, as a leader, as a pastor, as a cell leader, as a manager, we need to be sober and clear-minded. Thus, what? Always observing. Observing. Where's the lie? Where's the truth? And when there's the lie manifested through attitude and behavior, bringing teaching and correcting and then interacting. And you know, in my life, that's basically all I do all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm a father. I don't, I don't preach sermons. As I'm ministering to you today, this is not a little sermon for a Sunday service. No, this I'm speaking as a father to the family that God has connected us with. I'm here to, to, to speak what God has placed on my heart and through my own experience, help you and challenge you to identify the lie and then to take the truth, believe the truth and live the truth. That's what I do. And when, wherever you travel, uh, uh, you know, many have come with me. You know, what I do, uh, especially pre-COVID and even during COVID is, is I, 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 I train pastors, I train leaders. I do about, you know, eight plus stadium events a year where I train pastors and train throughout the world. But you know, that's, that's, that's the bigger picture. But you see, that might be one hour that I teach, you know, within a, 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 a sanctuary or in an auditorium. But you know, the actual work I do is before the time. When I'm sitting in the green room and there's younger pastors, I speak into their lives, discern the truth, discern the lie, help correct. Um, the person that's driving me, the person that's driving with me, the person that's helping me, the person that's helping me uh, wherever I go. Um, that's what I'm doing. Uh, many times I'll take somebody with me. As I'm driving, I'll have a youngster, 21, 22 year old sitting with me and I'll just spend, spend an hour with him. As I'm driving, I don't waste my time. I sit and then I speak and I dispel and I ask questions, ask questions. So I can hear, where's the lie? Where's the lie? Where's the lie? And what I do, I dispel the lie, not with Bert's opinion because Bert's opinion is death. You see, Bert's opinion doesn't mean anything. Bert's opinion means squat. Bert's opinion carries no authority. But I take the word of God and I share my experience in applying the word in my life and I'm able to help. That's what I do. You see, that's what a father does. That's what a parent does. You ask questions and according to those questions, identify the lie and you speak the truth. That's what a parent does. And, and as I sit with my people, as I sit with pastors, this is discipleship. Discipleship is not just having a cell together. Discipleship is interaction. It is, it is listening. It is hearing and then taking the truth and applying the truth within the set situation of every person's life. I don't have a meal without doing discipleship. Doesn't matter who I'm meet, doesn't matter who I touch, wherever I go. I meet with government officials. I meet with, with children that are 15 years old. It uh, doesn't matter. And one is not more important than the other. I'll meet with a billionaire and then I'll meet with somebody that stays in a shack. And you know what? There is no difference to me because at the end of the day, there's, there is purpose within each and every life. As a father, I'm speaking the life in. I don't need the billionaire's money. I don't want his money. Uh, at the end of the day, God will give us what we need when we want. All I'm there is as a father to look at the lie, dispel the lie and speak the truth. That's all it is. There's no other agenda because there's no other way to life than the Word of God. Amen. Are you hearing me yet today? Yes. And therefore, it's so important that, that we as parents, where we as pastors, teachers, we as citizens of the nation, that we need to be able to discern. Say with me, discern. discern. We need to know and to decide what's right and what's wrong. And we need to teach that in a godly perspective. In other words, not from a judgmental capacity where, you know, if you're wrong, I punish you. It's not about punishment. It's about correction. It's not about me being hard done by because now I need to punish you. You hurt me. Now I'm going to hurt you. That's punishment. No, it's rather it's correction where I can help you to become that which God wants you to be. Or else, what's going to happen? Your child is going to learn from all the other voices in the world around them. That's why you got to know who, you're, who, who your children hanging around. 
Who's their friends at school? You better know their friends. You got to know their friends. Who do they hang around? Who's their teachers? You need to know their teachers. You need to know because you need to dispel. You understand when there's ungodliness, you, you got to be able to dispel. You got to know who they hang around. You got to know who they speak to. What are they watching? What programs are they watching? What television are they watching? You see, you've got to understand that you've got to help them with the truth. Otherwise, the voices around them will then teach them the truth. And this experiential knowledge that they have, if there is no context to reality, in other words, there's no context to, 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 to the truth, which means there's a lie that's going to have destructive consequences. Um, and therefore, as a, as, as, as a parent, our sole responsibility is to teach the child the ability of discernment. In other words, the ability to make the right decisions. Listen to me. The ability to make the right decisions by themselves. The ability to make the right decisions by themselves when they by themselves. The ability to know from no right from wrong. In other words, it's godly wisdom. It's not a world wisdom. You see, because... You've got to apply the truth differently in every situation. And that's why Deuteronomy 6 and verse, verse 6 says, these words, the words of God, these words, he says, I command you today, they shall be in your heart. Where? In your, in your, heart. In your heart, not your head. Because from your heart, it goes to your head. From your heart, it changes the way you think. It's got to be in your heart. And he says, and you shall teach them. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Say it to me, diligently. diligently. You shall teach them diligently to your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in the house. In other words, in a casual sitting. When you walk by the way. In other words, when you're on your way somewhere and you're intentional to do something. When you lie down and when you rise up, which means what? Every place where you go, you need to be intentional about dispelling the truth. As a parent, we need to sanctify the family. Say so it be sanctify the family. Come on, once again, say so it be sanctify the family. Sure, time is up, people. I've got so much more to say, but you know what? I think we're going to leave it there. I think we're going to leave it there. And I'm going to continue because I think this needs, this needs a second week. And um, I've got so much I want to say, and I don't want to, I don't want to rush what I say. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to continue with sanctify the family because I want to speak about godly purpose and what that means and how you bring about godly purpose within your, your house and, and how you bring a maturity to your child even while they're young. Um, the ability to do that. And, and with Shana and I, you know, we've managed to, to do that within our homes and, and we want to help you. We want to, to teach you how to, how, how to do that. And, and so I'm not going to say much more, but, but let's make the decision that we're going to get to that place where we're not going to live in the gutter. We're not going to have our head in the sewer where we walk in that discouragement and we're so overwhelmed and the devil has so much control over your life. No, because why? Because of a lie that you believed and a lie you still believe. No, we're going to dispel that in the name of Jesus. And no matter what your situation is, no matter what you're going through, you think your situation is, 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 is too big? It's not too big. God will never allow you to be tempted above that which you might handle. You have the ability to work through what you're working through and God wants to help you and give you conquest. But you know what? You can't be doing it out of yourself through your own strength. You have to do it God's way. You need to get the word. Get to a leader, speak to a leader. Let them talk to you, let them help you. Get to a pastor, come see a pastor. But please don't out of yourself and running to the world and getting their uh, 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 knowledge and thinking they're gonna, it's not going to solve it's not going to solve it because that's why you are where you are in the first place. You need the Word of God within your life. You are believing a lie, covered of the mind. Come on, somebody. And the vaccination is the Word of God. You can do all things through Christ Amen. who strengthens you. Amen. You have the ability to overcome. God is not out to hurt you, to punish you. God is not angry with you. God is not angry with the world. But through what we're going through in these evil times, we will not be found sleeping and we will not be drunk. Yes. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. We will not be part of the mob. We will not be out of our mind as, as we're people without, uh, 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 without hope and we're angry and we're frustrated and, we, and, 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 and it's okay to be like that. It's not okay to be like that. Are you hearing me? Yes. But we are of the day. We are of the day. We have the Word of God. We are clear-minded. We are sober-minded. And what are we going to do? We're going to pull down those strongholds today. That lie in your life is going to be broken in the name of Jesus. That stronghold is pulled down. We're going to cast down those arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the Word of God. And then what are you going to do? You're going to practice it every day. When that thought comes, you take it captive according to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Every head bowed every eye closed, no one looking around. Maybe you've not yet given your life to Jesus, that's where it starts. Now is the time, now is the day to give your life to Jesus. He wants to change and transform your life, but you've been trying to do things out of yourself. Can't. You need to come to the Lord today. Give Him your life, everything that you are. Just surrender your life. He will come, take out that old nature, place His Spirit in you. You will change and transform your life. It's a miracle. You'll never be the same again if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Listen to what I'm saying. There's some of you, you've never done it. And then there's some of you, you backslid and you've moved away from God. You're not serving God the way you should. And I'm gonna count to three. And if that's you, you say, Bert, I wanna give my life to Jesus. I'm gonna count to three. I want you to raise your hand and I want you to say, yes, Lord. One, two, three. Yes, Lord. I'm going to do it one more time. Please, every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. Don't be shy of the people around you. God's speaking to your heart. He's challenging you now. Don't be shy of God. God wants to do the work within your life, but you have to receive Him. I'm giving you one more chance. If you want to receive Jesus Christ into your life, just receive Him right now. One, two, three. Say, yes, Lord. Now, just there we are. I want to pray with you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. And I want everybody to pray that no one's embarrassed. Say with me, dear Lord, dear Lord I need you in my life. In my life. Please forgive my sin. Please Take, my out sin. Out Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. With your spirit. Everything, that Everything that I am, I give to you. Give to my, you. Whole my whole life, I surrender unto you. I, unto you. I trust you. I trust your word. It says, if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called a child of God. And thank you, Lord. As from now, I am your child. I belong to you. Lord, I pray over each and every person who received you into their life, every power of the devil broken over their lives right now in Jesus' name. And I release, Lord, your Holy Spirit over each and every person in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. You now belong to Jesus. Now just go on the live link. Just press on that link. Fill out your details so we can help you grow in the Lord. It's very important. Or go to my3c.tv, our website, and just go to the commit page. Fill out your details so that we can make sure that you grow, you develop to become that which God wants you to be. Now church, I want you just to stand where you are and just, I want you to stand. And, and, and we're gonna allow the Holy Spirit just there where you are to minister into our lives. We are called as parents, we are called as parents. We are called to sanctify our family. As Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Have we allowed the lie to be the foundation in our home where we've become accustomed to relativism? In other words, that, you know, I'm not as radical, I'm less radical. No, there's only, there's truth, there's truth, and there's no truth. There's truth and there's the lie. There isn't a middle. There isn't an in-between. Either you trust God or you don't trust God. And have you let it slide in your home? Have you let it slide with your family? Where some things are okay or because it's an, you're an adult, it's okay. But because they're kids, it's not okay. But you see, truth is truth. Whether you're the child, whether you're the parent, truth is truth. A child, not allowed to lie. A parent's not allowed to lie. Pastor's not allowed to lie. Cell leader is not allowed to lie. Are you, are you hearing me yet today? Yes. Where have we allowed the word to slip? And I want us to just, there we are, just close our eyes. Become aware of the presence of God. We need to sanctify our homes. We need to set our homes for purpose. We need to bring God back into our homes. And say with me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father where, we have sinned, where we have sinned, please forgive us. Please forgive us. We, pray we pray that you will sanctify, our, sanctify homes. our homes. 
we declare as Joshua did. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Help us, Lord, to dispel the lies and to speak the truth. Forgive me, Lord, where I've believed the lie, where I've accepted the lie, where I've endorsed the lie, where I've produced the lie in others. Please forgive me, Lord. I believe you. I believe your word. I believe the truth. Just there where you lift up your hands unto the Lord. Become aware of the presence of God. And Lord, I pray for each and every person right now. I come against every stronghold, the manifestation of the lie in people's minds, in people's hearts, in people's marriages, in people's families, in our nation where the lie has produced fruit. I bind it in the name of Jesus and I dispel you. We cause you to die in the name of Jesus. You have got no right through the blood of Jesus Christ. Every curse over every home is broken over our community, is broken over our nation, is broken in Jesus' name. And we cast down all imaginations, all arguments, all reasonings, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the Word, against the Bible, and we bring every thought captive. You're a good God. You're a merciful God. You're a gracious God. You've got a plan. You've got a future for us. Thank you, Lord, that you're in control. In Jesus' name, I speak it over each and every person. Amen and amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The truth shall set you free. free. And you shall, what the truth? You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. free. Amen. amen. Isn't that powerful? So I want to encourage us, take that word, apply it every day in your life now. Every day that thought's going to come. What does the Bible say? Take the thought captive. Take the thought captive and punish disobedience by being obedient. Apply the Word of God within your life. Amen. Amen. Now, next week, we're going to continue. We're going to continue with the Word of God. And uh, remember, uh, we've got uh, Destiny Training starting on Tuesday. If you haven't done Destiny Training, of course, you have to have done Life Class. Life Class is starting uh, the week after. Um, but if you've done Life Class and you've done the encounter, you can start with Destiny Training. We're starting Tuesday. Make sure that you join the, the other 1,000, 2,000 students on Tuesday on Zoom. We have Destiny Training. Make sure that you're part of Destiny Training. Are you excited about the Women's Conference coming up? Yes. Hallelujah. Excited. Ladies, make sure that you're registered. It's going to be awesome, you know, coming in, uh, uh, in, in a couple of weeks. Weeks, so we are excited about that as well. Now, church, I want to release you and speak God's blessing over you. Remember, next week, we're going to continue with Sanctify the Family. Just raise your hands and, Lord, I speak your grace, unmerited, undeserved favor over each and every person, over every family, over every life. Whatever you need for the week is provided for by according to the Word of God. As we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Every day, we just need it. Resources, finances, health, uh, wisdom, uh, peace that surpasses, beyond, uh, surpasses all understanding will guard each and heart uh, through Christ Jesus. And of course, that the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Church, we love you. God bless you. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in Him and not be afraid. Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me the victory. 3C Church presents the annual It's a Girl Thing Women's Conference, Raver. Live on TBN Africa from the 28th to the 30th of September 2021. Hosted by Pastor Shane Pretorius. Featuring international guest speakers, First Lady Trina Jenkins and Pastor Geraldine Balano. With guest artists, Mariah Smallbone, Doros Mbambo and CC Winans. Online registrations are now open on my3c.tv.
3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at PO Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.